is Tariq Talk. Your host, Tariq Mendez, takes you on a journey with guests from all around the world. Broadcasting around the world. Around the world. This is Tariq Talk. Hey guys, today we are here with Kim Bricker. She is a neighbor of mine at R150. We're artsy neighbors, you could call. Thank we you so are. much for being here today, Kim. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me, Tariq. Perfect. It's so I'm so glad we finally get to do this. It's been so long we've been planning, so it's such a pleasure to have you here. I really appreciate it. Um, do you want to start telling us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, I'm a printmaking artist, and I work primarily in monotypes, which is uh, work on paper that's one of a kind. A lot of printmaking, you create multiples, but I'm creating just one work of art at a time. Um, and I do primarily abstract landscapes. Yes, and I have to say, the thing I love and admire about your work is how it just brings such a peaceful tranquility to me. It's uh, like every time I see it, it takes me back to like being a kid, like in a summer camp or being by the lake, being by the water, being by nature. That is wonderful yeah. to hear because that is like one of my primary goals yeah. and also where a lot of my inspiration comes from uh -huh. you know summers growing up on the water just like you said summer camp yeah. like spending time with family um yeah. and like really special places in my life oh i love that um so going to your creative process do you like how do you come up um i'll make sure to include a lot of your work in the video um, how do you come up, because I see like a lot of it's like kind of sunset inspiration and nature inspiration. Are you actively like going on your, as you mentioned, being in nature, are you actively like trying to take inspiration from that or is it just kind of like a spontaneous process? It's kind of a combination. Um, when I travel, I take a lot of photos. Um, I'm also working from memory. Oh, wow. And then I'll look at, um, you know, I'll observe artwork to landscape artwork and just kind of, I guess I sort of blend it all together. Yeah. Um, so I'm not necessarily saying, okay, I have a photograph of this place. I want to recreate this. It's yeah. more of like a mix of all those things. Oh. So as you mentioned, you're inspired by nature. Do you ever, um, as I had previous guests here, did you like plan air painting? Do you ever do something like that with your work? I haven't done anything like that yet. My process doesn't really allow it because mm -hmm. I'm doing printmaking, so I'm working on a plate, oh, um, okay. and there's sort of considerations for how quickly the paint dries. Oh, okay. But um, I was given a watercolor set recently oh, wow. that's landscape colors, and so I'm really thinking maybe this summer I'll get out there yeah. and try and do a little plein air painting just to draw directly from what I'm seeing and yeah. playing with those colors. Oh, I love that. I love that. And also, like, what's your creative process like? Are you like a morning person or a nighttime person? I love going to the studio in the morning yeah. when there's no one else there. Oh, that's the best. And yeah. it's quiet and, you know, some of our studios yeah. can be sort of loud. Yeah. Um, and as you said, my work is pretty quiet and mm. contemplative. And I kind of just, I need that quiet, um, sort of meditative environment to create. Mm -hmm. And when I have that, I feel like I convey that better through the work too. Yeah, oh, I love that. And then like, are you inspired as you're, like when you're creating, are you listening to music or, I know you have a lot of windows in your, in your studio, are you inspired by natural light? I'm definitely inspired by the light, but also it can kind of like mess with the way I see oh, colors yeah. in the studio. Yeah. And that's another reason why I like to work in the morning. Our yeah. windows face west. Okay. So we do get beautiful sunsets at the okay. end of the day. And I've taken photos out yeah. the windows to kind of capture that and, you know, think about what colors are out there. But um, primarily, like I said, I'm in there in the morning. It's quiet. I'm not listening to music. Uh -huh. And as you know, I share my studio with my husband yeah. and actually shout out to Josh, shout out to Josh. Um, when we're in there working together, I actually prefer that we don't interact. Oh my gosh. You guys actually work together at the same time. <laughs> we work together at the same time, oh, wow. but it's like, I don't like him I to talk to me. Yeah. Oh, wow. So I'm just in my zone. In your zone yeah. yeah. And oh. I almost pretend that yeah. no one else is there. I love that. Cause when I'm working, I don't like anybody around me. You, have you guys ever thought of doing like um like a collab in a way with your work? I've 
Which would be a little I've, complicated. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. kind of thought about, about it. it. Yeah. Um, I don't actually know if he would be interested. Yeah, but that's cool. I mean, you guys are like, <laughs> I think, the coolest artsy couple I've ever met in my life because, I mean, you're both like genuinely nice people. You guys look like models, you know, <laughs> and you guys are so talented. Um, but I, I also love the dynamic, you know, how like listening to your stories about you guys, like your travels, your hiking. And I remember the first time you told me like one, one time that you're hiking, I said, oh my gosh. Um, and I remember you should have picture, you guys were like in some type of like, I don't know how to describe it, but it, it was like orangey red mountains with a little water. And I said, oh my God, that kind of looks like her work. I wonder yeah. if that's like the whole background. Well, we love it. traveling mm -hmm. and during the pandemic was when we first got into visiting the national parks, oh. like everybody else yeah. in the U.S., you know, we weren't going abroad. So we discovered our beautiful national parks. Oh. And since then, um, we visited, I think, six or seven in the past couple of years. Oh my gosh, and yeah. there's been a lot of hiking. Yeah. Um, we I prefer desert environments. Uh -huh. um, I don't know. I find them inspiring and yeah. beautiful and austere. And that was probably one of those photos you oh, saw yeah. with like really cool rock formations, yeah. really cool earth tone colors going on. Yeah. It reminded me of um, like a artsy, like you guys remind me of like, if I'm getting correct, like Christopher McKendall's or the the guy that wrote Into the Wild. Yes, That's yes. That's like the vibe. I thought, yeah. I thought I remembered that name. Yeah. I'm like, why do I remember I always, that name? Oh, I used to be obsessed with that book and the soundtrack's amazing. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's like the vibe I got. It's like, you know, artsy, chill, like beautiful, yeah. like colors and combos. But also like, yeah. escaping yeah. the urban environment. Exactly. Like, yeah. ugh, that's... like getting away from people yeah. and just really immersing yourself yeah. in nature and yeah. not just observing the beauty, but um, I don't know. I think there's like I get re-energized mm -hmm. from being oh, out in beautiful. nature. So you're not like somebody like me, sorry to be guilty, um, that's like there taking pictures and videos. You're like actively trying to be in the present in the moment, right? I'm trying more and more. I used um, to spend a lot of time taking photos because yeah. I was like, I have to document these colors. Like I'm going to use this later in art. And now I find it's more important for me to just observe. Mm -hmm. Like my brain will remember what it needs to remember yeah. what colors it needs to record oh wow that's really cool like who are, um are your creative influences like who are you inspired by um i was wondering if this question was going to oh, come up and so yeah. i did actually a little bit of thinking ahead of time um definitely rothko i was about to say yeah, yeah with those colors yeah. um i've also always been a big fan of Diebenkorn. like when he was out um in california doing sort of those weird perspective landscapes. I find that pretty intriguing. And then also some of, you know, the great landscape painters mm -hmm. like Turner. I mean, you know, the colors and just recording a landscape so that other people can appreciate not yeah. just how it looks, but like the atmosphere and yeah. the mood and like the emotions. Mm -hmm. And um, I saw that you and Josh had a show at Novato Gallery. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Yes. Okay, great. Um, I love the work, and I love both of your work. Can you tell us how that went? Like, how was it seeing your work there and everything? I mean, it was a really... Uh, it was First of all, it kind of came out of nowhere. Um, you know, we were just talking to Anne Novato, the gallery owner, and she was like, do you guys want a show next month? And we were both kind of caught off guard and um, I had some work that hadn't really been presented in mm -hmm. such a beautiful environment before mm -hmm. like a it's it's such a professional wonderful space and um, just the whole process went so smoothly uh, her curation and placement of the work I was so pleased with um, uh, the work, my work is hung on the wall, of course, and then Josh's work is sculpture, and just the way that she placed them next to each other, mm -hmm. I felt like it really demonstrated this yeah. strange connection that our work has, yeah. yeah, with it, like with each other, which I hadn't really thought about before. Um, 
but yeah, I was extremely pleased and honored and humbled to show my work there. Congratulations, a beautiful show. Thank you. <laughs> and also, um, one thing that I love talking to fellow artists is that I find fascinating is like the idea process, you know, like I'm an artist that I like to let my ideas incubate and then when they're ready to like, let's say be birthed, then I'm ready to, you know, act on them. When you have an idea, like what's the process like for you? Are you right away like trying to like work that idea onto your medium or you kind of think about it and let it digest a little bit in your head? I keep a list Ooh, of fancy. like whenever an idea pops into my head, I just whip out my phone mm -hmm. and I have like an ongoing list of things. Uh -huh. And it can be anything from color combinations that I see when I'm out and about or um, titles for work. Uh, like sometimes I try and give a title to the work that suggests a place. Mm -hmm. And so I'll jot those down. Also just like weird ideas that I probably will never actually work on, but they're in that list. And then I definitely sit on them for a while. I'm kind of, I'm like two or three ideas back mm -hmm. in my actual work. Oh, wow. So, you know, I have yeah, things, I I, mean, yeah. yeah, I want, I, ha I have things I want to work on a month, mm -hmm. two months from now, but mm -hmm. they're still kind of, still kind of mulling around. And when you get the idea, do you get like visually in your mind, like the finished product or do you just see like colors together? I don't do that at all. No. Um, the way my process works is there's a bit of unknown mm -hmm. to how it's actually going to turn out. Yeah. Just the transference of first the paint onto the plate and then the paper and then, mm -hmm. you know, that connection. Sometimes I don't know exactly yeah. how it's going to turn out mm -hmm. and that that's something I really like. And yeah. the, that's one of the reasons why I like printmaking is there's a little bit of this not disconnect, but um, I'm not directly working mm -hmm. on the finished product. Yeah. And I like that area in between where you don't know what might happen. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. And the question, um, like since I started this podcast, I've been getting a lot of questions, mostly from young artists. And they're always like, oh, ask this question, ask this question. How, like a lot, like the main question I get is like young people saying, oh, like, what would you tell them, like for a young artist, they're, they're always asking on the podcast. Um, like, for example, how did you start? Like, how, like, what advice would you tell a young artist like that wants to be an artist but they don't know what to do? Like, how would you, let's say, encourage them in a way? The way that I started making art, which only really seriously happened a couple years ago, mm -hmm. was I just got materials that looked like they would be fun to play with. Oh, wow. And I just, it was during the pandemic and, you know, we were at, we were stuck at home. I had my dining room table and I ordered materials oh, online yeah. and I just, I played like, yeah. you know, we had time. I would just spend an afternoon um, making prints, making mm. hundreds of prints and some were really ugly oh. <laughs> <laughs> and some were beautiful and some were the kernel of what I'm working on mm -hmm. now which is landscapes and it only happened because I was just messing around yeah. with paint and yeah. I didn't I didn't necessarily have an idea of where I wanted it to go and I went in a lot of different directions mm -hmm. like I was doing I did also did a lot of sketching so I was doing figurative work mm -hmm. I was doing really just purely abstract work. I was really just playing with color. And so I was kind of like exercising. I was doing all the artistic yeah. exercises. Oh my God, so do you have any of that work saved? I do. Yeah. I have a couple pieces that I think were like the very beginnings of what was happening. Yeah. And then also um, I had a book of an artist, of two artists, Russell and Remington, who mm -hmm were known for recording the Western landscape, mm -hmm. um, I think in like the 1800s. And, you know, I love the West. I love the landscape out there. And so as an exercise, I sketched every one of the paintings yeah. in the book. And I have those in a sketchbook that I'll keep. Oh, wow. I love that. I love to see a retrospective of yes. <laughs> and did any of your like early work kind of look like what you're doing today in a way? like? A couple, yeah. um, but also there was always this play with color 
and um, trying to understand how colors work together. My artistic training was more conceptual. It wasn't like mm -hmm. like the nuts and bolts of mm -hmm. art. So I didn't learn like color mixing. Yeah. You know, I know you a little like bit. Yeah, yeah, I know a little bit about color theory, but like yeah. I was just seeing how colors work together. Oh, I love that. I love that. Previous guests, like they mentioned how being an artist and being with somebody that's not an artist is very difficult for both parties, like to share thoughts or ideas or connect in a way like you know, with like inside jokes or things like that. How is it like um, being together with an artist? Like, do, do you find it easier to like have a conversation or explain an idea and then Josh can understand it much faster than like an average person would? Yeah, I would say, well, the conversation is like, it's ongoing yeah. and kind of constant. Yeah. Um, and when we're you know, we're always seeing each other's work in the studio because we're working right yeah. there next to each other. And sometimes he'll even, if I'm not there during the day, he'll say, let's stop by the studio. I want to show you something that I'm working on. Um, and we just, you know, we speak the same language. Yeah, oh, that's amazing. Yeah. I love that. So I don't know what it's... Yeah. I've always, like, previous to Josh, I always dated artsy people. Mm -hmm. So I always have had, you know, someone that understands oh, that amazing. side of the conversation You're lucky. <laughs> yeah. you know because a lot of people say like you know when they're you know if they see like let's say like a shadow like um i had a friend of mine tell me this she was like you know like we were walking in a park and there was like it was kind of sunset time so a lot of shadows of people were on the ground i don't yeah. know how to describe it um and then i we looked at each other and i said like wow it was like a while let's take a picture right but like without kind of telepathically let's say and then I looked at her and I said, oh my God, this looks like Kara Walker's work. Ah, wow. And then she started and she says, oh my God, she was just about to say that. But I'm so <laughs> used to like saying these things with my husband and he doesn't know anything about art and he doesn't get it. That I just like stop vocally. I just like think to myself. And then I thought, oh my gosh, that's very interesting. And then since starting this podcast, like certain people have brought up that too. And that's like something that was like my subconscious in a way. Yeah. And then I, I was like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to like talk to somebody that's within a relationship with an artist. Because it must be like, I think so cool and so, like the vibe is supposed to be immaculate, you know? <laughs> it would be so dope. Yeah. Well, definitely when we're walking around, mm -hmm. we're both very observant mm -hmm. of small little details. Mm -hmm. And in our travels, either of us will point out like, oh, look at that interesting tree branch. Mm -hmm. Look, look at the sky right now and. But it'll, I mean, I, I think it's regular. Yeah. Non-artsy non people yeah. might, might notice those <laughs> Sometimes, things too. Knows, right? <laughs> but the shadow thing, that was like yeah. Kara Walker. Yeah, that was, yeah, do you know what I mean? It's yeah, like yeah. that when people get it, they get it. Yeah. But um, going back to your work, you mentioned that you take lots of pictures in your hike and that gets you know later transformed into actual work. Are you ever working from like, um, as you said, the two gentlemen, the books, do you only work directly from the pictures you take or are you like inspired by, you know, books or magazines or whatever i mean anytime i see an interesting landscape mm -hmm. i kind of take note of it yeah yeah um, and i have also you know i'll take screenshots of things yeah. that i see on instagram mm -hmm. the other day when i was working on um some new pieces some water pieces i just did a quick search online of um shore paintings because mm -hmm. i was like oh yeah like what I wanted to think about, okay, there's going to be a sky, there's going to be water, there's going to be beach, and what are the transitions between those areas, mm -hmm. and I just kind of wanted to get a, a little bit of background yeah. input on maybe how artists treat those areas, yeah. so I kind of, I use that too yeah. as a reference. Oh, wow, that's amazing. And like, where do you see yourself, like, are you an artist that's thinking of the future that you think, okay, I, I want, like, maybe two or three years to try this, like, do you normally, like, try consciously to think of different things or mediums to pursue or you're just like how can I make this better or transform this to something else I feel like my work is it's on like a path or a trajectory mm -hmm. um I don't know I'm sure it will evolve over time yeah. it's a slow evolution but I think it's evident if you look at the work but I would say goals for the future are I would love to do a residency out west somewhere where I can really just oh, like wow. 
immerse myself yeah. in a landscape and like in a, like somewhere with nature yeah whoever's listening because yes. i know there's some people listening because i know some people follow me on instagram please give kim her residency because the work <laughs> will be amazing but oh my god that'll be like the coolest thing for yeah. you like, to see your work just where i can um maybe concentrate on one landscape mm -hmm. and to be there living in it yeah. and then you know observing like it day in and day out yeah and working directly from nature yeah. with my process so that you know ideal situation is like big windows looking yeah. out onto some sort of desert landscape and i'm there cranking away at the printmaking oh my god i love that <laughs> i love that and i mean this is just an idea i had did you have, like question um did you ever like when you're creating something use something from nature because your work is kind of like related to nature like sand or a little you know like a little stone here or something like that i haven't done that no? um right now the work is it's on paper and i'm fooling around with like how to frame it but i'm not opposed to bringing mm -hmm. like actual elements in in yeah. fact i have this jar at home where whenever we travel somewhere and i pick up no you way. Know, oh, wow. little rocks yeah. and shells and stuff and i have this one jar that then i come home and deposit it in oh my god and do you like <laughs> go back to that for like inspiration i don't really but i keep it on my bureau uh -huh. and i think it's sort of like a reminder so cool. of like really yeah. fun trips i've had in really beautiful places oh wow i love that it's really cool and, and i have to just to be nosy what sign are you capricorn and what month is that january Oh, okay. You guys are very chill. That makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, well, happy belated birthday. My apologies. Um, yeah, whoever's listening, please watch the video because Kim looks flawless. She looks like a top model. And then when you talk to her, she's the sweetest person. Um, okay, so Kim, um, do you think like having an art space has helped your work? Having the studio space? Yeah. 100%. Mm -hmm. um, I don't... I was doing stuff at home, but it was never, it never felt serious. Yeah. But when you rent a space and yeah. you leave your home yeah. and you go to this, you know, it becomes your, your workspace yeah. and not just having that space, but being surrounded by the community there has been like a life changer. Yeah. Um, I've never had the opportunity to work in a you know, a professional artistic mm -hmm. manner, surrounded by so many people who are doing the same things, mm -hmm. um, being able to ask them questions, yeah. get their feedback, just hear stories of how they're navigating the art world has been incredible. And mm -hmm. I, I can't imagine not doing that indefinitely. Mm -hmm. That's beautifully said. <laughs> um, and I have a question, do you, um, when you start your work, are you able to, like, if you start, like, as you say, you come in the studio early in the morning, if you're not done by a certain time that you have to leave, are you, like, okay with that emotionally? Or do you kind of, like, get anxiety from, like, oh, my gosh, I've been here. This has to be finished. I cannot leave until this is finished. Or are you able to, like, you know what, let me call it a day. Let me go have a beer. Let me go, you know, walk around, do whatever I want to do, and then come back and try to fix it or finish it. Sorry. The process is... I usually complete a work in a day and then there's sort of finishing work. I mean, printmaking is, it's a pretty quick process. Mm -hmm. You know, there's the background of collecting the ideas for what the landscape's going to be, what the co what color palette I'm going to work with. Yeah. And then I have sort of a structured way of laying out the print. So there's all that background stuff that happens ahead of time, but the actual printing process usually happens in about a day mm -hmm. and sometimes I've stopped halfway through and it doesn't it doesn't really bother me um the process is it's pretty chill it's pretty relaxed yeah. and I'm like in my zone and when I leave this studio I feel really good like oh, I feel okay. like really calm and like that edgy part of my brain has been knocked down yeah. um so I can I can stop midway through, and usually I find it's helpful for me for the finishing work to kind of take a day or two, because sometimes well, like in between for yourself. Yeah, because okay. sometimes I don't feel necessarily a hundred percent excited about what I worked on, mm -hmm. and then after a day or two, and I come back to it, and I I don't know I 
reconsidered it and it doesn't things usually I don't know they sort of turn around and look a bit better after yeah. I step away from them a little bit okay interesting and the thing I like about your work is that you do a lot of like for a kid you're like I'm so grateful to have this summer but I used to you know, almost cry like, yeah that's the like the, the vibe I get and how another thing I love about your work is like the title all right Kim so would you mind telling us the the inspiration and the meaning behind the titles of your work I always find that so fascinating. So usually when I'm traveling and I see an interesting street name or town name or place name, I'll jot it down in my phone. And then um, I try to choose titles that don't direct the viewer too much. Mm -hmm. I don't want them necessarily to need to know the specific place that inspired me. Yeah. But I want them you know, to just remember being next to the water sometime yeah. that, that, you know, impacted them or to be in an environment that maybe looks familiar to the piece that I've created. So I don't want to necessarily say, oh, this is this, is this beach yeah, yeah. or, you know, yeah. this is this desert. It's, um, you know, it should just evoke a place mm -hmm. and a memory for them. Oh, that's beautiful. And when you look back at your work, do you remember, like, exactly where you were, the inspiration for that piece and everything like that? Not necessarily either, no. because it's kind of a combination okay. of things that I'm drawing from. Um, and also, at this point, I've been to so many deserts <laughs> that there isn't necessarily one hike yeah. or one place. It's more just the atmosphere, the colors, the feeling that I'm trying to draw from. Well, and when you're creating your work, are you actually like consciously thinking, you know, I want the visitor to focus on this because from my, like my, um, my perspective, like it kind of like soaks you in and then you feel, I feel like emotions and I'm like, oh my gosh. And then I start to like circulate the painting and then I see the title. And the title to me, it's always like, it's not overbearing, but it always goes perfectly with the work. And I always think, oh my gosh, that's so genius, you know? Well, I think of the work as kind of being like a photograph or like a fuzzy memory of a place. And so I kind of want, sometimes with more abstract work, a title can kind of help people understand what they're looking at. And yeah. um, sometimes my work will have a detail in it, like a landscape formation or something mm -hmm. that I want to call attention to. Yeah. And, you know, maybe it won't be obvious if they're just looking at it and not seeing the title, but then when they see the title, they might say, oh, okay, yes, yeah. I see, this is a frozen yeah. pond. Exactly. And it, it always, like, gives, like, the cherry on top. Like, yeah. it enhances it so much because sometimes I'll, like, see something, like, two of my favorites is, like, the yellow that goes into blue. I forget the name of that. But I remember, it, I don't know how to express it, like, the title, it just, like, gives that extra, you know, what do they call it in English? Like Judd? Like uh, I forget. There's like a there's like a, a slang word that they say it's like. Oh, I, the I, I don't know. I don't know the contemporary no. slang. <laughs> but uh, like that's how I feel. It's really it's really nice. Um, okay. So Kim, would you mind telling us what you're working on at the moment? Sure. Um, I'm actually trying to do some sort of Jersey Shore inspired okay. scenes. I haven't done a lot of straight up beach viewpoints um, and so I'm, I'm sort of muddling through that at the moment and I think actually what I need to do is I need to go to the beach and spend oh, yeah. some time there yes. to sort of understand the landscape and the color a bit yeah. better. Are you ever able to, I remember my question, are you ever able to like mentally relax? Like my brain, I'm always thinking about ideas, whatever I see, like even your jacket, the beautiful color, reminded me of like a cool sculpture idea, right? So my brain is always on and that's a good thing and a bad thing sometimes. For you, like when you go to the beach or on a hike, are you always, is your brain always on like in an artsy way? Like you're always thinking, oh, this is beautiful. Like this, like for example, like whenever I go hiking, which is weird, but I do sometimes, the thing I love about it is the stones, like yeah. especially when it's like red oxide. Oh, I just, cause it like, I just think it's the most beautiful color for stones, right? And then, and then it just gets my brain going, like sculpture, painting, painting all this, yeah. painting all that, you know what I mean? Are you like that or are you able to like, okay, this is like a me time, let me relax and be in the moment. I'd say it's a combination. And I really like uphill climbs oh because then I can't, then I can't you think really about anything like else. A lady, a woman that does it all. Like, <laughs> every time I talk to you guys, I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start doing this. I'm gonna start doing more like outdoor 
and then you go like just now the height i'm like oh my gosh okay let's <laughs> do a pick lick first you know but yeah. also sitting sitting anywhere and watching water mm -hmm. that calms so me down right? yeah. yeah i can just stare out there and kind of yeah the brain shuts mm -hmm. down a bit which i need that every once in a while yeah, too definitely and when you talk about landscapes are you do you mean like landscapes in general or are you like for example, are you kind of like consciously trying to go after like paint sunrises or sunset or both? Also, some of my work is not just a landscape, but it's what I like to say a landscape through time. Oh, wow. So as I shift my print across the paper, mm -hmm. I'm maybe changing the time of day yeah. or the season. So I'm also kind of interested in looking at a landscape and saying, okay, what about dawn or dusk? Mm -hmm. makes it look a bit different here and mm -hmm. what colors are represented then mm -hmm. uh, same with time of year i did a lot over the winter that were frozen landscapes mm -hmm. and kind of playing around with a lack of color mm -hmm. or like really really subtle colors yeah. um yeah so time is important too and yeah. who doesn't love a good sunset or what's sunrise? your preference like do you prefer sunrise or sunset well sunsets I catch more sunsets. More sunsets. <laughs> Just yeah. because I'm not awake at yeah. sunrise. Oh, that's On true. the rare occasion that yeah. I am, I am I'm usually surprised by how beautiful it is. But right? I'm, I'm, I'm like that too. I'm not probably gonna get up at six AM. Yeah. I'm like that like when I do see it by accident or <laughs> yeah, I'm by like, accident. Oh, this is so beautiful, I should yeah. get up more uh -huh. more often. Yeah. <laughs> when you're going to the airport or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what I was thinking. I'm like, wow, this is so beautiful, the colors. Um and also, like, do you have anything coming up at the moment? Um, I'll be showing my newest work at the Jersey City Art Crawl, the okay, downtown cool. art crawl. And when is that? That's that is May eleventh. Oh, eleventh, yes, yes. May eleventh. Yes. I think it's a Thursday. Thursday, yeah, from um, five to nine, I believe. Five right? to nine cool. at the studios on the second floor at one fifty Bay. And let's just make sure because um, somebody messaged me. I think it was like the last art crawl or basically Friday. Do you know the street names there? Because everybody... The new address, the corner is at First and Provost. First and Provost, okay. I never know how to... <laughs> Take uh, the elevator up. What do you call, like, how to pronounce it properly? Provost. Provost. How do you say it? Provost. Provost. The Provost. I don't know yeah. what it means. Me neither. It reminds me of, like, food or something. I think it's, like, an yeah. administrative role. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway. But yeah, so the art crawl, there's going to be other artists there i might be there i'm not sure yet i might I be so. out of state um but definitely we cannot miss please go and check out kim's beautiful work Thank say you. hello um do you mind sharing your website and instagram with us um instagram is uh kim bricker daily kim bricker all one daily. word i don't have a website no so no i, I mean know. nowadays it's still trying not to have a website and use the instagram as a mm -hmm. website so you're once again you're ahead of a step ahead five shots <laughs> um and another thing because there's a artist that um somebody reached out to them in terms of commission are you open to do commissions and things like that i am yeah yeah so they can just like reach out to you like dm you i feel like when you're on your instagram yep. and set everything Absolutely. up okay yeah, perfect. just don't sound scammy yes you please know. no like i'm going to wait for my nfts or yeah. whatever yeah please <laughs> Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for being on the podcast, thank Kim. You, it's been a pleasure too. having you. I'm so happy we finally got to do this. Me too. You're a busy world girl traveling, <laughs> get inspired by nature, and finally we got a podcast done. So thank you so much. I really appreciate you being here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Tariq Talk. Follow Tariq Talk on all social media channels and check out the video interviews online.